Okay, before we go any further along uh, past where we are, we're going to take a quick look at some of the additional options that you have available to you by right-clicking on your your objects. So let's go ahead and go into the gallery here, and we're going to select our orange parallel again and drag it out here onto the stage. And I'm going to go ahead and just create multiple instances um, purely for the purposes of showing you. And I'm going to actually press Control A to select them all and right-click on them. I did that purely so I could show you these align features without them grayed out. So they're only available when you have multi-selected uh, objects, but you can actually align them in a variety of different ways. And we'll take a look at that in depth in one of the coming lessons. So we'll leave that for now. I'm going to come back to my stage and go ahead and delete one of these objects. I'm going to pull this other one to the center of the stage, and I'm going to right-click on it. Now, you remember what we spoke about with the, uh, the aspect ratio uh, a lesson ago. Well, basically, this gives you an option here to keep aspect ratio. So if you click this, when you scale your object, you'll notice it stays in its original aspect ratio. So that's basically the equivalent of holding down the Control and Shift key while you're scaling. But if you're a person who knows for sure that uh, your object is not going to be changed in aspect ratio, you might like to engage that for an object. For example, a logo. And then that way you can just freely uh, size your logo up and down by dragging the corner without having to worry about its uh, aspect ratio. It won't get distorted. Okay, So we'll right click again here and we'll take a look also at the arrange and restore size features. The arrange feature allows you to arrange objects in the Z order. That is to say that objects on the canvas actually have a stacking order. And we'll look at that in the future lesson coming up in the same chapter so we won't go too in depth into that but to suffice to say that you can actually uh, send your object to the back or bring it to the front and so forth by right clicking. Restore size is an interesting and the shortcut key is control R that's an interesting feature where if you've been tweaking your objects you can actually just go ahead and select that and it'll put it back to its original size so let's say I wanted to uh, put this button here and I wanted to experiment and say well you know I want to see what that button looks like a little bit larger. And so I go ahead and I set it larger by clicking on that corner and dragging. And then I say, hmm, maybe, maybe I want it a little smaller. And I try that out. And by the time I get to here, let's say, I can't even remember where I had it originally. So I just go ahead and right click on it and press restore size and problem solved. There we go. We're at the original size. So that's what that feature is for. Now let's take a look at some of the other stuff here. There's a button maker, and we're going to look at that in depth in one of the coming lessons. But to suffice to say that that's a tool that's built into Autoplay Media Studio that allows you to make and edit your own button objects. Okay, so we've got a cut, copy, and delete feature here. So those are pretty typical. You can go ahead and prepare things for pasting and get rid of objects and whatnot just by right-clicking on them and selecting those options. And then you'll see here that we have the lock and pin options, and we'll be looking at those in the next lesson and also we can access the properties for the object here so for example if we use the control enter key shortcut or right click and press that properties thing we get this button properties dialog where we can go through the attributes actions and settings and as we go through the button chapter we'll actually take a look at all these in depth so that's the right that's the additional options with the right click context menu and we're going to move on now to grouping locking and pinning objects